In this video, we're going to take a look at the connection between infinite limits and vertical asymptotes. So in previous courses, you may have uh, defined vertical asymptotes differently here, but now that we know about infinite limits, we can rephrase the, the definition of vertical asymptotes in terms of infinite limits. So the line x equals a is called a vertical asymptote of the curve y equals f of x if at least one of the following statements is true. So there only has to be one of these. So if any one of these six things is true about the limit as x goes to a, either from the left, from the right, or the two side of the limits, if any of those is either infinity or minus infinity, so it just has to be one of those to be true, then the line x equals a, which is a vertical line, is a vertical asymptote of the curve. Okay. So that's how we're going to define vertical asymptotes in this class, in terms of the function having an infinite limit at the number. Okay, so let's just look at a quick example. In the second example that we had about infinite limits, we calculated these two limits here. We found that the limit as x goes to negative 3 from the left of 4x minus 5 over x squared minus 9 was negative infinity. We also found that the limit as x goes to negative 3 from the right of 4x minus 5 over x squared minus 9 was positive infinity. So either of those two facts by themselves, right, one or the other, right, tell us that the graph of f of x equals 4x minus 5 over x squared minus 9 has a vertical asymptote at negative 3. Because this limit was negative infinity at negative 3 from the left. That tells us that x equals negative 3 is a vertical asymptote of the graph. And similarly for this part of it here. So let's actually take a look at the graph of 4x minus 5 over x squared minus 9. Right? That's what the graph of it would look like. And then uh, we know based on the definition, right, or based on the limits that we calculated, the limit as x goes to negative 3 from the right it was positive infinity. So that's what it would look like on the graph. The graph has to like turn up there and the closer and closer you get to 3 from the right the bigger the y values get. So there was no choice the graph must do that. Same th uh, Over here we found that the limit as x goes to negative 3 from the left was negative infinity, right? So that graph turns down like that and the y values get smaller and smaller. So either of those two things told us that x equals negative 3 was the vertical asymptote. Uh, the vertical asymptote is not part of the actual graph of f of x, but it's just a line, right, that the graph gets closer and closer to. And so we can see here the, the graph turns up. We had the positive infinity was the limit, so that means the graph turns up and keeps going that way. Same thing here as uh, we go to negative 3 from the left, the, the limit was negative infinity, so it turns down like that. This graph also has a vertical asymptote at positive 3. So if we took the limit as x goes to positive 3 of this function, we would also get that, that same um, behavior that uh, from the right it would go to positive infinity. From the left, the limit would be negative infinity. And so there we would also have another vertical asymptote there.